Hey guys, it is a cool and cloudy summer day, although it feels more like April here in uh, you know, New York, baby, up here in the Finger Lakes of New York at Bugs in a Jar Farm on this cool and cloudy Saturday morning. I think it's July 10th, uh, 2021, somewhere around there. So, <clears throat> So last week, my dear sweet sister, my dear little lefty sister, you know, who gets probably 95% of her information uh, on the way the world works from NPR <clears throat> and the New York Times brought me this, uh, the New York Times Magazine, I think, I don't know how recent this is, I think a couple of weeks ago, I guess the New York Times Magazine uh, dedicated pretty much their, pretty much their whole issue to, uh, to climate change with the cover story, <clears throat> the only solution, meaning to the state of the planet, Try everything. Try everything. So they have all of these little, uh, <laughs> you know, all of these solutions. These solutions to a predicament with no solutions. Now, nowhere on the front cover do I see a picture of a chastity belt. Do I see a picture of a birth control pill? Do I see a picture of a condom? I don't think that's a picture of a condom. Uh, it's hard to tell what some of these solutions to climate change are exactly. Uh, anyway, so what is, first you gotta get past the, you open it up to try to get a description of the cover and you find a two page ad just inside Solutions to climate change. Obviously, we have an ad for a car. Uh, ad for a new car that, uh, after looking at all the solutions, the number one solution is to buy a new Lexus. Yes. Engineered to a higher standard, the human standard. Yes, it is. Okay, so let's see. I have to put on both pairs of glasses since the New York Times magazine is built for people uh, who can see, I guess. All right, <clears throat> behind the cover, well, not behind the cover, behind the car ad, uh, for our climate issue, Francesco Muzzi's cover illustration depicts a complex array of proposed solutions. Wind power, building better bridges, building better bridges. Uh-huh, that'll take care of the planet. Eating bugs and more to capture the issue's central theme, which is that humanity now needs to use every tool, or not use a one particular tool, to avert catastrophe. All right, and then we have an entire, uh, an entire magazine I was I was gonna do a full fledged rant here, guys, but uh, we're just going to hit a few of the highlights. So they put some in boldface for us. Was that a normal hot June day or a man-made hot June day? Butterflies. There used to be more of them, right? And of course, don't forget take care of each other and get vaccinated. <clears throat> yes. Um, should I hang out with someone whose political views I hate? All right, here we go. The six-foot hero 
what better way to celebrate our renewed social lives than sharing a sandwich that is practically the size of a small car. I can't think of anything else that sets off so much giggling as a six-foot hero sandwich placed on the table. So after you've finished, after you've bought your new car and eaten your six-foot hero sandwich, then it is time to sit down and try everything. Try everything. All right, so now we have a, so I guess they've distilled, so I guess recycle, I don't know, is this algae, wind, throw money at it. Don't forget to be a social justice warrior to save the planet. We got solar panels to save the planet. Stop eating meat. Uh, drive your electric car. Uh, plant more trees. I guess this one is build better bridges. Fly less. This is probably write your congressman. Not sure what that one is. Then we have, I'm not sure what the cargo ship icon, and of course, eat more bugs to save the planet if you can find a bug left to eat. Alright, better living through CO2. So at this article it is doing is, you know, uh, talking about how the only way uh, that we're ever going to get uh, global corporations to invest in pulling carbon out of the air to uh, save the planet. You know, to suck that carbon right out of the air is finding all the ways to use the CO2 that they suck out of the air. Now, of course, now the number one use that they put captured CO2 towards is, you know, pressurizing spent oil wells to pump more oil. You know, the oil that just the regular pump can't get is the number one use of recycled CO2 on this planet is to inject it into low-performing oil wells to push more oil out of the ground. All right, anyway, but we're going to their big article in the middle, their two-page spread. We're going to talk about how politicians, how politicians are or are not going to save the planet. Yes, we're going to save the planet by getting a bunch of politicians sitting around a table kicking the can down the road. Yes, so we're going to read just the introduction to this article and the very last two paragraphs because I, I admit, guys, I have not spent, I have not read every word of this magazine, but I perused it pretty thoroughly looking for the word overpopulation or even the word population anywhere in the New York Times magazine on ways to solve the climate crisis. <clears throat> All right. Of late, who is this? I don't even know who this is. Uh, it would be real nice if they gave the name of the author. Uh, nowhere in here do they... Oh, Ezra Klein. I think Ezra Klein... Yeah, Ezra is just one of the editors of uh, this fine magazine. Of late, I have been obsessing over a single question. What if political systems in the United States and internationally fail to curb climate change? It seems an impolite question, even as it is the path 
we are on. Mm-hmm. It is the path. Would you settle down? Stop being such a little wiggle worm. I know you want to get up there and get chippies like that. But you need to sit down. We need, we're trying to look for solutions to uh, the collapse of a planet, and all you can do is wiggle uh, wanting to get out there and chase your damn chippies. Put a cork in it for a few more minutes. Yes. President Biden's climate agenda is both ambitious. Yes. Uh, uh, President Biden's climate agenda is both ambitious and on its own insufficient in political prospects. Its political prospects are mixed at best. The international picture is a little better. Only a few countries are on track to meet the goals laid out in the Paris Agreement, and none of the major emitters are among them. Now, of course, the New York Times, uh, just if, you know, if an editor of the New York Times magazine mentions the goals of the Paris Agreement, it is just understood by anybody reading it. It, it is implied in there. Anybody reading it, including my dear sister, who I love dearly, uh, that the goals of the Paris Climate Agreement are going to do one thing to turning this freight train around. Uh, I don't know if the New York Times has ever had an honest appraisal of the sick, twisted joke of the Paris Agreement. That is not to say there is no reason for optimism or hope. Clean energy and battery technologies are outpacing even the brightest projections from a few years ago. I'm not going to get in the rant. The worst thing that we could possibly do to this planet is create clean energy. It is the inefficiency of dirty fossil fuels that is the number one check to humans destroying the planet. Get rid of fossil fuels, replace them with an unlimited supply of clean, green, free energy, and humanity will destroy this planet a hell of a lot quicker than it's destroying the planet using fossil fuels. But I'm not going to try to explain this to Ezra Klein of the New York Times. <clears throat> All right, don't forget the act. Activist movements, activist movements worldwide are gathering strength and flexing newly won power. A rising generation. This is the Greta Thunbergs, the Greta Thunberg generation, understands the urgency of the moment. Yes, even if their elders do not. The trends are broadly going in the right direction, but they need to move faster. And so we convened this panel of climate experts with different backgrounds, technological, literary, political, and academic, to try to reconcile the reality of our political progress with the scale of the emergency and then so what this is is a Q&A you know basically talking about how we're going to turn this freight train around with uh, the people they chose Saul Griffith, Rihanna Gwan Wright, Kim Stanley Robinson and this uh, woman named Sheila Jasanoff. Sheila Jasanoff is a professor of science and technology studies at the Harvard Kennedy School. 
So anyway, there. This is the you know the main story in the magazine is interviewing all of these climatologists about the political realities of solving climate change or not, and they give the last paragraph to Sheila Jasanoff. The very, very last paragraph. I do not believe it, guys. Uh, I, I, in some ways, I was disappointed, uh, but it's, it's glad to, I'm glad to be proved wrong that in the very, very final paragraph, we don't find the O word, but we do find the P word. Take it away, Sheila. <clears throat> No matter what happens, there will be a class of people <clears throat> all over the planet who will have the money, the political connections, the insurance to move their houses inland or up the hill or whatever. And who knows, maybe the kind of thinking that we had in the United States back in the 1970s about the population explosion and the need to control the global population could make a return. You know, who cares if there is a winnowing out of global humanity, if Noah's Ark can be made available for the rich. Thank you, Sheila Janoff, for one breath of honesty uh, in this entire uh, pile of techno-utopium, hopium-soaked uh, greenwashing crap uh, from the mainstream media trying to sell you a new Lexus and a six-foot Subway sandwich. Uh, I can't believe that Ezra Klein and the New York Times uh, decided to stick in the last two sentences on what page did Sheila make this comment? At the very bottom of page 39, you will find the P word. The winnowing out of the human population. There you go. But anyway, I could go on and on with this rant, but I think we know the New York Times opinion of how to save a planet and that's to buy a new Lexus and pack it with a six-foot sandwich. But with that, little dog, we can finally, you can start being a little wiggle worm again because we got to get outside and move a wood pile. Get out there and move a wood pile while you still can. Bye, guys.